Hello, it's Janet Rockware for Moon Cusser Art. And we're going to be playing around with some metallics and powders on this piece. It's only a small canvas. It is 12 by 12. It's gallery canvas that I have prepped with black spray paint. I like to tape off the back and I use yogurt cups as my feet. And that works pretty good to keep it off the surface. Here's the tools and the colors we're going to use. And let's get started on this piece. I have mixed up um, 12 ounces of resin. It's a lot for a piece this size. I usually don't use that much, but I wanted to make sure that I had lots of resin to play around with. So this is tinted black. Even though I painted the canvas black, I wanted to get effects with the metallics working right into that black resin and that way I'd get some good lacing. So that's my idea here. Once I got the black spread out and looked for any dust particles in the resin, I started pouring out my colors. The colors that I picked are Arty Sue Bright Gold and uh, Caribbean Sea. Those are two metallic colors from Artie Sue. And the pink is a black diamond pigment powder. And that is called Scarlet, I believe. And it has a real nice um, gold that lifts out of it when you're working with it. So I'm using my palette knife and I'm just spreading out some of those edges of the resin. And I just kept on working, um, playing around, using my torch and the heat gun to blow everything about. Um, I try to work uh, two-handed at times with the torch and the heat gun, and that lets it move and spread out. So this went really well. Um, I love that scarlet pink that I used from Black Diamond. It really is a pretty color. And I find that the pigments that I got from Artie Sue, um, they just do a really good job lacing out and you really get some nice um, of that effect and pattern in your resin. So I just went about making this. This is the first layer and I'm going to be working in two layers so this is the first one getting laid out here. Alright, day two and I'm clear coating the canvas. I only used about six ounces of resin for this layer so pretty uh, skimpy on my part but it's all I needed. You're going to see me pour out a ribbon of clear and then I'm going to follow that up with my color. Now, I found that I wanted to go a little bit lighter with the pink. So I used a, a uh, pigment from Black Diamond. It's called Liquid Fire. And this one has a bluish purple metallic that comes out of it. I wanted to use more of the Artie Sue Caribbean Sea and also the Artie Sue Bright Gold. So those are two of the same colors I used before. And I'm just going in small amounts because when I work on a second layer, I don't want to take over the piece. I want to be able to see through that top layer and see what is underneath. Now this is the exciting part. I know. It, it's silly, but yeah, I ordered some nozzles off of Amazon and some different size ones. This one was fairly concentrated. I used my Wagner heat gun on a medium heat setting and the blower I put up high. So the force of it getting channeled through that smaller opening really drove those pigments out through that clear ribbon that I had laid out before. And um, coming in with the torch, it's going to heat everything up, and then you blow it out a little bit more, and it really moves well, um, thins it out, 
and gets that lacing to just pop up to the surface. Now, let me tell you, you guys don't miss a beat. One of my friends spotted that I didn't have a mask on in one of my last videos, and she was spot on. Thank you, Mary. The masks are really important for those of us working with resin. You can see in this piece, I am heating it up. I'm using the torch, I'm using the heat gun, and I'm getting some um, flaming off of this piece and a lot of smoke. I have a fan in the window and I have a brand new respirator full face mask on. I uh, made quite a stink in the room using this uh, process. So having proper ventilation, having proper protection is key when you're working with resin. If vapors are in the air, there's potential for it to be harmful to us and we've got to protect ourselves. So make sure you invest in getting that. Uh, you'll see in the reflection my mask and it still actually has the tag on it because I was still testing it out, but I like it. So again, here we go. We're just pouring out the clear line of resin and then follow it with your whatever amount you want to work with for your color. Um, I did want to have some layering and intermingling of those colors so that's why you see me doubling back and putting those different layers of color in there and then I get that uh, what am I going to bring in here? Uh, let's see. Looks like I torch it up. And then I'll come in with the heat gun with that nozzle and drive those pigments across. Uh, I tried to zoom in as best I can. So I hope you guys are able to see how it's lacing out. Um, it really, the metallics just kind of really are super when you work in this method. Um, just really gives a, a really pretty, pretty finish on here. So I'm just still pouring, going in between, doing a layer, or not a layer, I should say, a ribbon of the clear, and then follow it with a ribbon of color. This time I only used the gold, but I was driving it into the other colors using the heat gun and the torch and moving that around. I got a lot of smoke today. Probably not so good, but uh, it's not like the resin was setting up on me already. It's just that I was using very high temperatures. If you pour out too much of the clear resin, don't worry about it. The resin does self-level itself out, and um, it's going to be working its way. So it, it's still early enough in this pour that I'm not concerned. If you're doing it too late into your work time of your resin, that's when you start getting the hills and valleys in the surface of your resin. But a lot of times I even find those interesting. So, you know, you can do all kinds of different things. I've seen other resin artists that just uh, put a layer right on top and leave that edge exposed and it adds just another bit of interest. Now here I'm going to drive out with the heat gun. I want to open up that spot. So I hit it with the heat gun or the torch and then I come back in and blow it out with the heat gun and it really opens that spot up down to the clear again. Now if you feel as if you're you know getting too much of the same pattern across your piece you can come in with ribbons of color and that breaks up and gives you more interest too. So I'm going to just do that adding in wherever I feel like I need to make something else happen for the eye on the canvas. Again this is only a 12 by 12 so it's a great way to learn your techniques. Go small in the beginning. I know everybody is concerned about the price of resin and uh, putting these clear layers in where it's already kind of been setting up and, and I've done my um, effects. When you put that in, now it's going to break in there and 
it's almost like having a puddle effect. You get that ripple of a stone. Okay, we're almost finished here. And I'm just going to keep putting on a little bit more. Being careful, my resin is definitely starting to slow down and get thicker. Um, I'm not sure how much you guys can see, but it is definitely getting thicker and slowing down. So I know my time is almost over. I'm really liking how this nozzle tip on my heat gun works. I can get it in close to the canvas. It's not as wide as when you use that fan blade. I like the fan blade when I'm working on larger pieces. But for a small piece like this, it's really working great. And now I'm going to start doing a little bit more of a concentration of color. Again, it's going to be more of a puddle. And I'm going to kind of go heavy-handed. I want to break up that big blue area, that Caribbean Sea is just overtaking that spot. We'll add a little bit of the gold because it needs that too. And drift it off the page there. And let's get that torch and heat gun. Give it a pop of heat just to get it hot and blow it out. And I started when I started to do the blowout. I saw some really nice lacing pop from that gold in that pink and I didn't want to move it too much because it just really uh, spread out good. Again going back adding a few bigger puddles filling in some spots where I felt it was needed. A little bit of gold and why not? Let's get that pink in there too, huh? Because the pink is pretty. There you go. Okay. Looks like a lima bean. Now I'm just trying to get some of that clear in there so that I can move it where I want it. It really helps to flow and it's going to push whatever's ahead of it too. Hit it with that torch, get it to go hot, and blow it out. This stuff is addictive, guys. Watch out. You're going to find yourself, whoa, there's a flame off, huh? Anyway, you're going to find yourself having so much fun, you're going to want to do more. The respirator that I have on has a full face mask on it, and it um, looks kind of like an astronaut's uh, face mask. But um, it's really quite comfortable. I know a lot of people complain about the different masks that they use, but... Um, this one really it doesn't bother me, and I'll be honest with you, with as much smoke and flame that I got off of this piece, I was feeling pretty good that I had my uh, safety equipment on. I always wear the nitrile gloves, and I do not stick my bare hands in the resin number one. It's hot. And it'll be burning you, especially if you just hit it with the torch or got the flames off of it. So don't get, uh, don't get any ideas about doing that. But the, um, the vapors are pretty intense, um, especially when you're trying to get the lacing to come out of those metallics. It can be um, pretty, uh, pretty tough to handle. And uh, good ventilation is key. So use your head and be careful because um, nobody else is going to do it for you. I would recommend when you're first learning to work with the resin to don't worry too much about your outlying corners because you can always come back and add in where you feel you need to do a little bit more work. It's the 
body of the canvas that you want to focus on. So I'm just doing a couple of little tweaks here. I'm pretty happy with the effects I got out today. And um, I'm going to be wrapping it up here. And, you know, this uh, color combination is a really pretty one. I think I like this liquid fire from Black Diamonds better than I like the Scarlet. The Scarlet, I don't know, it just uh, seemed like it didn't hold up in that black as nicely as this liquid fire it did. And it combined better with that Caribbean Sea. All right, so now I'm just go doing some really fast bursts with that torch to get kind of coax out a little bit in the end there. And let's get ready to take you guys down off of the tripod to get a close look. Okay, the camera's off the tripod and we're zooming in. I am thrilled with the effects I got in the process. I like that nozzle tip on the heat gun. I'm going to try to do a few other things with it. This was really a test situation. That's why I like to use those 12 by 12s. Um, gives me a little bit more freedom to play around and see what it can do. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate everybody checking in on the channel. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Leave me some comments, good or bad, because that's what helps me make a better video for you for the next time. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you soon.